welcome to the final part of this video. So if you remember the from the previous video, or if you've just come from watching the previous video, you'll know that we got to the point in which we were successfully simulating emitter arrays. So taking several or more, however many emitters you want, putting them into various different configurations and then seeing what happens when the phase between each of the emitters was changed. So seeing how the resulting waves that were emitted sum up in particular points and don't sum up in other points. So in particular, the two applications we saw were beam steering. So changing the phase in such a way that the direction, the most intense summation of waves travels, changes with, with regards to the phase. What we're going to do now is we're going to go through and look at some more interesting examples. So see what happens. Can we actually get this to focus? So rather than just emit the waves in a simple direction, can we actually get the waves to be focused onto, say, a spot, a particular spot? The easiest way to do that is we need to think, what do we mean by a focus? So a focus means all the waves converge at one point. If all the waves are converging at one point, it means that we can do the opposite. We can say, OK, if all the waves were emitted from one point, how does that spread out? So if we go ahead and think, OK, so let's say we have a point and we'll call this X, Y. And we have an emitter, let's say at position X naught, Y naught. What's the relationship between the phase of a particular wave with a particular speed? What's the relationship between the phase and the position of that emitter relative to where the object is going, to where the object is emitting from? And to do that, we're going to take a point. So we're going to say, OK, this will be our focal point, x, y. And we're going to say, take an emitter. We're then going to calculate the distance from the emitter to the focal point or the focal point to the emitter. Which is given by this expression. Which is the magnitude of the difference vector. And remember, e dot r, so is the emitter dot r, which contains the x, y coordinates. We then need to multiply that by something which describes the phase. So if you remember, the phase is given by kr in the expression for a plane wave. And we know that k is equal to 2 pi over lambda, which is the wavelength. And so plugging that in, we end up with this expression, 2 pi over lambda. And what's that saying is that from this point x, y, this emitter, is at this phase relative to a wave that's spreading out from that point. And so if that's not that easy to understand, let's go down and actually do an example with this. So let's create another demo. So copy that. Copy that. We're going to copy this first one over. Call it demo three. And we'll call this focused. Focus array. Uncomment all that. So what we've done here is we've created a linear line of emitters. So let's let's start off by setting the phase equal to zero. So this is our first example. Okay, so all of them are emitting at the same time, which means we get this strong wave traveling in the forward direction. So in the positive y direction. What we now need to do is we need to use our function that we've just created. So calculate phase from focus. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate a phase. So calculate phase and focus, and let's choose the point 20, 20. So x equals 20, y equals 20. And then we pass it each individual emitter. So we're going to be working out the phase from that focal point to each of the emitter that we create. And then we're going to set that emitter to have that phase. Set phase, and we'll set it the phase. Okay. And this should be the minimum we need to do. So let's have a look what happens now. So we can see there's now a certain phase relationship between each of the emitters such that the wave that is given out converges at the point 20, 20. So if you look there, bang. So there we have a very intense wave in which all of the waves converge at that particular point. Now, if you don't believe me, let's go back. Let's increase our array size. Let's change our focus to something in the middle. 
now let's have a look so i've set the focus to 0 20. so you can see all the waves travel outwards from their individual emitters and where they interact the strongest is indeed at the point 0 20. and again because this is a linear array we have this line of symmetry along the y equals 0 axis so the intense focus at 0 20 is also present at 0 minus 20 but we can really see here how each of the individual emitters is giving out its waves at just the right phase so that by that when they all add up so the point in which they all add up is that which was determined by our simple function and once the wave has traveled past once a summation of the wave has traveled past the focal point we can see it starts to spread out again so it'd be less intense so this is just showing us that we really can use these things called phased arrays change the phase of each of the individual elements of the arrays and actually be able to do things like beam focusing so not just beam steering now we're talking about beam focusing which i think is really nice and applications for this would be things like ultrasound you could actually have an ultrasonic emitter which is basically just made up of a series of individual ultrasonic emitters you can then change the individual phase between them in such a way that you can change where it's focusing and then again by changing that phase in real time you could actually get a scanning beam so you can actually have a beam of ultrasonic energy for example that actually scans across a focus so just something like an xy scan so i personally think this is really nice you can really see how the way it focuses a single point which is determined from this very simple calculation above now let's do another demo so if you remember at the beginning i talked about this thing called beam forming so this was where you have something like a 5g antenna you have two users so without going into too much technical detail what actually happens is during this a certain period of time so you might have um, a very small chunk of time in which your phone can communicate with the mast and in that particular time you communicate everything you want to do so your voice data etc etc but you you're allocated a certain spectrum of frequencies you might have a, a few hundred megahertz <clears throat> window from the actual antenna itself and then you're allocated a few megahertz from that in which you then communicate and the reason they do that is then because you can have a certain number of frequencies or a certain band of frequencies to which you communicate someone else using their phone can have a different band of frequencies to which they can communicate the same antennas can be used to emit different frequencies the exact same four antennas for example on this image can be used to send a signal out in two different directions using this beam forming and that's simply because each antenna itself can emit more than one frequency so each emitter can emit more than one frequency and by changing the different and changing the phase of each frequency between each antenna element changes the direction in which it's emitted so we're not going to do quite like this because i don't setting up each emitter to emit two different frequencies might be quite difficult what you could do is just put two emitters on top of each other which i think that's what we'll do let's close that and let's go back to our demo one so let's just check what demo one was so this was the linear array of emitters and let's just change the phi So that the summed intensity of the waves is in a different direction, which will be given by 45 degrees in this particular case, the left. Okay, so let's copy that over, comment it out, and let's do demo four. We'll call it dual frequency emitters now we've got the dual frequency emitters so what we're going to do is we're going to do this twice so we're just going to put emitters on top of each other in actual real life you would just have the same emitter emitting two different frequencies but that's going to require a lot more coding whereas we can do this in just another three lines by adding this in again and then rather than add phi we're going to add minus phi we're also going to let's change the frequency to half the frequency let's do that and we can do one more thing remember we had this variable in our emitter 
called color. Let's change the slower frequency to red. Color equals red. Let's see what happens here. So we can now see we now have two different emitters. So one is blue, one is red. They're both emitting at different frequencies. So you see the, the, the red one is emitting slower. So there's less of the red waves being given out than the blue waves. So the frequency is indeed lower. Also, where they're summing up, so the direction in which they're being have been formed or being beam steered is different because the frequency relationship between them is different. So I think this is really interesting. And we can do one even better. So let's close that down. Let's go back to our focused array. So remember, we can focus them at two different points. Let's now pretend we have two different people wishing to receive this, this wave. And we'll do the same thing where we just go over the loop twice, put one emitter on top of another. And one will be focused at 0, 20. The other one, let's say, focus it at minus 20, 30. We'll give that a colour of red. And we'll give it a frequency that's only slightly lower. And let's have a look what happens here. So remember, the red one should focus at minus 20, 30, which is here. So that's the red wave. It does indeed appear that all the waves are converging at that point for the red frequency. And likewise for the blue frequency, it should be focusing at 0, 20, which is here, which is indeed the case. You can really see how this can be used. This has practical applications, especially for things like especially in antennas, so actually focusing radiation where it's needed to be. And so this is really nice. Let's do one final example in which we take our focused array. So we'll still focus it at a single point. Let's call this demo six. Call it focused array random. So what we need to do now is we need to think, we obviously have always had these antennas in a line, these emitters in a line. What happens if they're randomly distributed in space or not necessarily linear? If we go ahead and open this up, we can actually give this an expression. So we're going to distribute the emitters randomly within a, within a, within a, within a box. We're then going to tell it to focus, to adjust its phase in such a way that it focuses on this point zero twenty. Remember, phase of each emitter is calculated from the distance and wavelength so the wavelength of the wave and the distance to that particular focal point if we go ahead and launch this you can see that each of the emitters are randomly spaced but they have such a phase that their emitted waves sum up so become most intense all cross over at the point that we still desire so this is still 0 20 at the point at which we desire this is really really nice how we can actually see this working so even if they are randomly distributed we can still get them to focus and you notice now we don't have symmetry so before when we had our linear array of elements we had this situation where whatever we did in the top half of the y plane for example would be mirrored in the bottom half of the y plane this is no longer the case because you don't have that line of symmetry so everywhere else other than the point where focusing is now receiving waves that don't necessarily overlap nicely and so if you were to sort of measure the intensity at any of these points out here, you would measure considerably less than at this point here. And this is also, you also sometimes get this in things like offices. So you'll have a situation where you're sat at your desk and you'll hear a very annoying high pitch ringing noise. And then just a slight movement is no longer there. And then you'll, you'll continually keep checking. And you realize that there's, there's like one particular spot in which all the waves seem to be converging and causing the most annoyance. And that's because the, the source of the noise, whatever it may be, like your computer, will be missing waves in all different directions. And when they bounce around, bounce off various different things, you end up with this almost random pattern of emission. What if the phases are just, are just right between 
most of these emitters it can it can all end up converging on just one spot and then you end up being in a situation where it's incredibly annoying and i had that with my old computer where exactly where my head was it was the most annoying so i had to sit perhaps just five centimeters to the left and it would it would go so it'd be completely gone because you see how it's really really intense where they all add up and then shortly afterwards and shortly before it's nowhere near as intense because it's more distributed in space so it really shows you shows you sort of applications of this and let's do one more fun thing let's create a seventh demo we like we like to be fun on this channel demo seven let's just spread them out a bit further you know what let's spread them out over quite a large distance and we're still going to tell it to focus on a particular spot but now the spot's going to be inside of where the arrays are i'm telling it to focus on the point zero twenty and let's see what happens And this shows you as well that the waves don't necessarily all have to be traveling in the same direction to then overlap and cause something very intense. The different waves together could all be traveling in random directions. But the point at which they're all meant to focus here, 0, 20, it becomes very, very intense. And then the waves move away from each other. You can see there, they're all crossing over. Let's change N. Let's create more of these antennas. More of these emitters. Again, look at the point zero twenty, which is there near the mouse. Watch what happens. See all the waves come together at that one point. All of them at the one at one time. So it's random. Everywhere else it's random. You, you get a situation where you have some crossing, some not crossing, weak areas, not so weak areas. But then at this particular point zero twenty, they all converge. At once leading to really high intensities really high signals which is basically what you saw in the very first video where we saw the water spike what's happening is all those waves are coming together at just the right point in time and space to actually produce this huge so yeah so i think i will leave this video here i think it's been quite a nice journey just to show how you can take something physical so it's, it's it's very simple it's basically circles that move outwards in time and then by adjusting when the circles actually start so all these circles start from different positions adjusting the time at which those circles start to move out in time you can get it so that all the circles themselves add up at another certain time in space to become more intense and again, this is real world applications, beam steering, beam forming, in ultrasonics, in sonics, in RF design. So as real world applications, it's just, it comes from very simple principles. You just adjust the phase in such a way that these things pop out, that these things happen. That's where I leave it today. Thank you very much for watching the video. I'll probably start putting these codes on GitHub somehow. And I'll leave a link in the description below so that if anyone wants to download these and have a play, they can do. So, thanks for watching.